I know this is a unusual experience and I didn't make it clear that we weren't going to be speaking on the phone. So I apologize for that. Um, I, uh, let's see, this is June 3rd, 2018, um, 10 AM Eastern, 9 AM Central. So I know your name. I know your age. Um, I know you have that many grown children, where you are, and then where you're going to be later this month. Other than that, I don't really know anything else. Okay. So, uh, this is just me clearing, clearing stuff. So the oils that wanted to work with you today were Melaleuca and black pepper. I don't know if you have doTERRA. If you have a doTERRA account, uh, it would be great for you to get Melaleuca and black pepper and just inhale them. They're not really drinking oils. You can use the black pepper if you cook. I uh, wouldn't use a lot, but I'm going to read you from the emotions book what these two oils signify. So Melaleuca is for clearing and boundaries. We did a lot of clearing today. It's a disinfectant by nature. Melaleuca, also known as tree oil, tea tree oil, clears negative energetic baggage. It specifically releases codependent and parasitic relationships. These toxic relationships may be with people, microorganisms in the physical body, which mean, which would mean an infection in your physical body. So you could basically either have a, uh, an infection, some sort of infection in your body, um, or it's helping you release a codependent parasitic relationships, not just spousal, but, um, you know, friendships too. Because as you grow, having, you know, having a healing has the intention of growing. As you grow, you can outgrow people, but you can always love them. You can um, raise your own vibration to the point where you can reconnect with them later <coughs> in a healthier way. <coughs> so maybe you have a, a friendship that you couldn't, you didn't feel completely comfortable speaking your mind. And so you just sort of take a little break from it. Um, raise your vibration deep, more deeply and completely love and accept yourself and, and come into your power. And then you can reconnect with that friendship, but it would be at a different level and the person wouldn't be able to, um, you know, emotionally manipulate you and things like that. And, and, and you know, your responsibility too. speaking for yourself. All right. Uh, these toxic relationships, okay. The individual may feel drained of life force and energy, but they may not be consciously aware of the source of this energy leakage. Melaleuca helps break the negative ties in these kinds of relationships so that new healthy connections may be formed that honor one's personal space and boundaries. The ener this energetic vampirism between organisms violates the laws of nature. Melaleuca encourages an individual to connect to people and beings in ways that honor and respect others' agency. It helps the individual to recognize the parts of themselves that invited and allowed these kinds of relationships to exist in the first place. So basically, through your own healing and your own taking responsibility and your own stepping into your own power, you say, okay, well, uh, for instance, my I had a very long friendship with someone, and I didn't want to speak. Uh, I didn't want to speak in a way that might get me yelled at. So it was my fault with the dynamic of the relationship that was created. I just never said anything if I disagreed with this person. So this person for decades uh, believed that the me that was showing up was me because why wouldn't I be? She was powerful. She spoke her mind. She, but I was a weenie and I allowed a relationship to um, I wasn't true in that relationship because I just didn't want to get yelled at. I just wanted it to be fun and funny and laugh all the time. Um, so I had to face through, you know, I had, an, I had a medical issue that made me face. Why did I, why did I call that relationship? Why did I allow that? Why did I set that dynamic? It wasn't healthy for me. So it's not, her fault. It was my fault that I didn't, I didn't show up and truthful and honest about what I thought and felt 
because then the relationship could have fallen apart years before it ended up if I'd just been honest and truthful. Anyway, through these empowering processes, Mel Luca encourages an individual to relinquish all forms of self-betrayal, including allowing others to take advantage of one's time, energy, or talent, letting others feed on one's energy, not standing up for oneself, or feeling responsible for the problems of others. This applies to you because there was a lot of crap on your back. We'll talk about that in a minute. Melaleuca assists individuals in purification practices and in releasing toxic debris. All right. So you didn't make any mistakes. Um, you just lived your life and then you come for, a, then you get a healing and we just clear away whatever we can clear away. Uh, when you go through life, this adventure of life and this, you know, experience of life, uh, like a game, you're going to pick things up along the way that uh, aren't you, but they they can change you and they can, um, there, there was no better way to live your life. You didn't do anything wrong. We are here right now. We're just here. And so all the experiences that you've had on the friendships and everything, and now it's time to, because what, what you're doing is you're trying to grow. Trying is not doing. So trying is expecting failure. So trying to grow is is still at least setting the intention to grow, expand, um, raise your vibration. The thing is what, what people don't realize and why I get them when I get them is that imagine if you wanted to redo your living room. Let's say you wanted to redo your living room. So you, you go out and you buy all this beautiful new furniture and new rugs and, um, and little knickknacks and stuff. And you bring it all into your new, you, you bring all this new stuff into your living room. You're like, ah, oh, it doesn't look anything like I thought it was going to look. It's kind of ugly. Well, the reason that's ugly is because you didn't take down the 1970s wood paneling off the walls. You didn't rip up the old shag pink and green and teal carpets. Um, you know, maybe you had a smoker in there and you, you got to take everything out of that living room, rip all the carpets up wash everything, you know, repaint, and then you bring the new furniture in. But energetically, people don't, you can't see, I mean, you can see a living room, so it's pretty obvious that that's you, what you would need to do. But energetically, you can't see that the energy of the old stuff. So you're, you're moving all the new stuff in, and you're doing great, great stuff, but you're moving new stuff in without first clearing any old stuff. So that's what I did today was cleared out the old stuff. Okay. Uh, the other oil that wanted to work with you is black pepper, and I am gonna I'm gonna do a video on DoTerra oils. But um, if you have DoTerra or you know someone, you probably know someone with an account. If you don't have one, I can send these oils to you if you want them, but you don't have to. Or I can make you a little blend in a roller bottle, which is like 10 milliliters. Um, I they're 25 dollars, but. Uh, I usually do them for 20 if you've had a healing, but um, whatever. You might not even want one. Okay, black pepper. So black pepper addresses suppression and hiding the true self, the oil of unmasking. And so I know how many kids you had. So uh, it's not like you were hiding whatever. You're just busy. And, um, you know, all right. Black pepper reveals the masks and facades used to hide aspects of the self. Since childhood, most individuals have been taught that some feelings and behaviors are good while others are not. So instead of seeking to understand seemingly inappropriate feelings and behaviors, um, they usually judge, condemn, and repress them. Or in your case, you know, you didn't have time. There was times you didn't have time to address or deal with things that were coming up for you because you had to get something else done. Individuals learn, but then as, uh, as your kids became more self-sufficient, you, there's a good chance that you may have taken on new obligations to friends, family. If you're part of a church, like church groups, um, people asking you, Hey, can you help us do this? We're doing this. There's a lot of great, great causes out there. There's a lot of ways to help other people. And so sometimes what happens is as the kids leave, you, you, you have all this time and People say, hey, you have time now. Uh, you want to help do this or help do that? And so you do and you get involved. And, that, and that's great. It's just a, um, it's 
just a an experience that you're having and when you do that you're doing something so you don't have the time to focus on yourself and and um, see who you really are so but again no mistakes so black pepper invites individuals to get real by digging deep within the less understood parts of the self whether one's true motives and feelings are acknowledged or not they continue to exist the more these feelings are pushed down buried and repressed and you may not feel like you did that but the thing is sometimes you just don't have the time you don't you don't meditate you don't clear out whatever doesn't feel good you don't have time to question beliefs belief systems that you were handed uh, by caregivers so you don't have time to go through and see what do I really resonate with anymore what do I really feel anymore um, so I could always talk to angels since I was tiny so what happened for me the way it happened for me is grown-ups would tell me stuff and I'd be like well, that's not true I could hear my angel say that's not true but she's just you know she thinks she's helping so if you can't talk to angels when you're little you take in all the information so I had like higher light beings going keeping stuff out of me which is why things that have things still happen to me and I still had to do my own work and stuff but uh, what I notice is that people take in their caregivers beliefs and belief systems and then they don't question it and then sometimes like if you were if you were dragged to church or brought to church every Sunday or um, you know and even CCD whatever whatever your parents did when you were little and growing up even if you don't go to, and, and you think that's the right way and even if you don't go to church now there could be some underlying guilt for not going to church now and it, and it stems back to your childhood okay all right so these things get pushed down if they're not honestly dealt with and acknowledged they will often be expressed through erratic compulsive or addictive behaviors so I was wondering if you had some sort of um, an addiction it might not be smoking um, there's so many different addictions uh, and then the arms came up later and it gets addressed again in a question with the addiction uh, you know as far as are you doing something you shouldn't be doing um, so compulsive it could be just a compulsive behavior so but if you smoke if you do smoke if you do have a smoking addiction don't quit smoking just quit yet um, if you do smoke I would like to have a conversation with you about how to go about shifting that because people smoke for grounding and I don't want to take a grounding uh, away you ground out of your life so we just need to if you do smoke we would need to replace it slowly with another way to ground so I need I would need to teach you all about grounding but people who smoke need grounding they smoke and then they become grounded but the problem is they feel guilty for smoking a lot of the time and guilt is the lowest is the second lowest measured vibration at 30 I said 50 last night but it's 30 50 is apathy but guilt is 30 all right so if you're lowering your vibration with the guilt of smoking that's not serving you that's not helping you you need to just accept whatever the addiction is first you have to accept it and you have to understand that if you feel guilty about it you're going to lower your vibration which is going to keep you in that addiction all right black pepper also reignites the soul fire fueling motivation high energy and hastening the healing process it gives an individual strength to overcome the challenges and issues they carry inside and invites them to live in integrity with the self so doesn't mean that you're not living in integrity it just means that your true self has um, a higher vibrational integrity and you want to get in alignment with that integrity and it may be very close to what you're doing and I think it is because what I found but uh, it, it may just help you get even more into alignment okay so your guides um, looks like I can hear your guides your guides were so excited to get started and they, they were all like she's such a good girl and so it, it was like very you know emotional I wanted to cry and I was wondering if there was maybe a female 
in your life that has passed. Um, and then that comes up again later. Okay. We need to do some ego work with you. So the ego is not a bad thing. It's just a thing that was born the day you were born into physical life. Um, so your ego is scared to come into the present moment. It wants to be like a producer on a TV show in like the booth where there's a delay so they can bleep out the swears. So your ego wants to have be holding like a, a time delay so that it can make sure that you're not going to get hurt so that it, it won't have to pull you out of there. So, but your soul is really, really desiring to move into a more present moment awareness, like right in alignment. And a good, a, a great resource for that is Eckhart Tolle power of now on CD. So with the job that you're going to start in the end of the month, you, I'm assuming that you can listen to books on tape and stuff like that. So if you can listen to Eckhart Tolle power of now on CD, that would really go a long way. Uh, you just want to understand what the ego is, how it talks to you, what it thinks its job is. Its job is to keep you safe, sane, and secure. And it does the best job that it can. And it just loves you so much. The ego loves us so much. It doesn't want us to feel any pain. And it'll, it'll manipulate reality to keep us from feeling that pain. But you're ready. You want, you're ready to move into a more genuine, truthful, in alignment with spirit existence. And so if you can get that Eckhart Tolle Power of Now on CD, it's seven CDs. And then when you're in your new job, um, you can, um, like libraries often have books on CD. So that might be a, a, a good thing for you to do. Not the whole day. You don't want to be distracted, you know, from the gardening, but, you know, as a way of maybe enhancing listening and because weeding and because whatever your job is going to be, um, can be enhanced sometimes with, you know, he listening to these kinds of, there's so many really good stuff. Carolyn Mace and Clarissa Pinkola Estes, all these people, Thich Nhat Hanh, all these great, great higher vibrational teachers. Um, okay. So you get it. Setting up your life. Okay. So your ego wants to keep you out of the present moment to keep you protected, but you are setting up your life into something that you want to be present in. Your ego has been helping for many decades. It loves you. It wants to keep you safe. Um, books on CD. If you have time, there's this thing. If you have time, I don't want to give you more stuff, but I don't know what, I don't know you. So I don't know if you're like big on social media, if you like distract yourself with a bunch of stuff, but there's this thing called tut notes from the universe. And it, and you can sign up to get, and it's free. You can sign up to get these notes from the universe. So like, and, and they come in, like one of them came in for me at 3.49 AM. Um, and, it, and it just says this, and they're all different and they're not all long. This is long. Can you imagine an astral plane somewhere out there? And it uses your name, Carla, where very old souls rendezvous to practice and perfect their most highly developed manifestation techniques, a members only kind of place where whatever they think about comes to life in the most vivid colors and sounds and as the most intricate plots and circumstances where the only limits that exist lie in their ability to imagine what they've never before imagined and move with it in anticipation of its physical expression. And best of all, being astral, no harm can come to them. They're completely untouchable. Nothing is real, yet everything matters. And there can be, an, there can be infinite gains in terms of insight and fun yet no losses since everything is illusory. Actually, the scariest thing that can happen is that they temporarily become so entranced by their creations, which is distracted, you know, on the physical plane, that they completely forget who they are, where they are, and how powerful they really are. Yep, it's exactly like this astral plane. Tally-ho, the universe. And, and so he writes these, it's Mike Dooley is his name, and he, so these come to you like for free, and then he offers these big workshops, ones in Hawaii. And then, and then you, you get like, there's still time to save a hundred dollars. So, I mean, I, I, I haven't gone to any and probably won't for a while. I have little kids and 
my life is in balance right now and it feels really good, but maybe someday. Okay. So then Archangel Michael came in, was behind you. So you may have felt that. I don't know. Um, and then I could feel you're so ready to change your life. That's so beautiful. And then, so when I'm in the energy flow, I can write corny stuff that I judge now that I'm reading it. Um, and then I wrote, give yourself a hand. Uh, because it, there's so much beauty in where you are, where you are right now. And the way you've lived up until now, you've had all these experiences and you've gotten to this point. And now you're so ready to change your life and you're, you're ready to be present. And it's very exciting. And there's just, there's just, if you can imagine, it's like for like angels and your guides and people who've passed and looking down on you, they're not condescending, but looking down on you like, oh my God, there's, there's so, they're, you know, they're just uh, ready to, you know, it, watch you enjoy your life. Um, and change and just to enjoy it as much as you can. I had a 20 year old, 21 year old cousin that died and I almost quit doing healing work because of, I, I thought something and I was wrong. And so I'm like, wow, I was wrong. He's not alive. I, I could see him. I could see him walking around, but he was still on the earth plane, but he was past. So he was in spirit, but I didn't know he was in spirit. I thought he was walking and uh, I told them where, uh, where to find where he was. And so the stuff I got about where he was, was accurate, but there was a body there and not an actual person walking around, which I didn't understand at the time, but I almost quit doing healing work because I was wrong about one thing, even though I got other things correct. All right. So he came to me cause I talked to people who've passed. Maybe I didn't make that clear, but I talked to people who've passed and came to me and he said, why are you making my death about you? Why is this about you? And I said, well, as I got it wrong. And he's like, so why would you give up what you love to do and how you help people just because you got one thing wrong? And, uh, you know, I was crying. It was like awful. And he's like, don't make my life about you. My life has nothing to do with you. I, I came, I did my life and it's, and it's over. And so I, so I said, um, okay, so What's the, what's the meaning of life then since you're here? Uh, I'm, I'm, fa I'm skipping a lot, but what's the meaning of life since you're here? What's the meaning of life? So he says, the meaning of life is be happy. And I said, okay. And so how do you, how do you do that? And he goes, you just let go of everything that doesn't make you happy. And I was like, so it's that simple. Like, and he's like, yeah, it's that simple. Okay. So you're ready to be happy. And that's the meaning of life is be happy. Just be happy. And you're ready to change your life to be happy. And it's like, ah, oh. so like my cousin who died and he's like, just be happy. My mom who died, just be happy. Uh, my grandmother's come in and winked at me here and there. Like, ah, oh. so when, so where you are right now, you're like, I'm ready to be happy. It, it's so, they just love it. Love it. Okay. So it's so beautiful. Give yourself a hand. All right. So your arms want weights or yoga. They want strengthening. Okay. So as I was doing this, I didn't know about arms. I looked up arms after this, so, but your arms really, they really want strength. So the job that you're going to be doing will make you stronger. Uh, but they want more like they really want to be I, I they want like muscles muscles in the arms so they want like strength training or um i burped to clear uh they want strength training left like i had really nice arms when i did yoga like classes regularly but just anything there's a p90x which is a video workout program you'll if you do want to do that that gives you nice arms there's this other video program called Pio. it's pilates and yoga it's nice for people with big boobs if you have big boobs um Pio, it's called um and the ladies are really fun that's a really nice and then you just get the videos and do them in your house um which is nice you don't have to find classes um i like yoga classes but i don't like that people just want to 
chatted up right after. It's like, oh, we, we worked so hard to get to this place of peace. And now you're going to talk about, you know, whatever. Okay. So I stopped going to yoga classes and I just, I like to use videos or, um, you know, on YouTube, just so I could just do my own thing. But your arms really want strengthening and they also really want to stretch. They want to stretch so badly. You need to stretch and twist your arms. Okay. Really? So then I looked up arms. The arms enable you to create and communicate to bring your ideas and words to life. Your shoulders extend down into your arms, extending the doing energy into action and into the world. Arms manifest all your inner desires and longings. Arms express energy coming from the heart out to the world through hugging, touching, sharing. And then I don't know if these questions are relevant, but I found them attached to this thing. Are you doing what you want to do? We already went over, you're changing your life, you know, you're moving into like where you're ready to change your life to just be happy. Are you doing what you want to do? Are you doing something you should not be doing? So that was the black pepper. There could be an addiction, some form of addiction that wants to, your soul wants to clear. It doesn't have to be smoking. It could be, it could be Facebook. Facebook is an addiction for some people. Um, video games. Are you playing Fortnite? <laughs> okay. Are you extending yourself too far or holding yourself back? And then there was, is there someone or something you need to let go of, which also came up in a little bit. All right. Your body will change in your new life, but let go of stories. Like if you think you have a big butt or legs or stomach. So if you are looking at body parts and thinking they're too big, um, just please remember that your body's going to change in your new life. You have to remove all stories of that body or body parts are too big or not beautiful. Um, so start holding this story. I have a beautiful, strong body. Not I'm going to get it because that keeps it in the future. You want to bring it into the now. 68 seconds. I have a beautiful, strong body. And this comes up again later. Um, okay. So then, so then who you are now, you got a little visit from your higher potential self. So everybody's got a higher potential self energetically in the future that can come and visit in healings and maybe visit you too. But um, this higher potential self just wanted to let you know that, um, uh, Currently, any partner you would be interested in is not good enough for your higher potential self. Okay, so you're you're going to be raising your vibration. Um, you know, you're going to be really right raising your vibration all different ways because you're really set on this and you're really going to do it. You may feel like you backslide here and there, but don't think you're going backwards. What what happens is. You set the intention to work really hard and then you backslide into old habits. Like let's say you quit smoking for like three months or whatever, and then you have a cigarette and you're like, oh, wah, wah. It's not the same because even if you quit smoking for three months, when you smoke a cigarette for that, for that one time, if you do this, not that saying that you're a smoker, but if you, it's just an easy example to provide. That cigarette that you smoke or someone smokes after three months of not smoking is not the same as the cigarette that was one of hundreds that they smoked before they quit. It's totally different. You can slide back into the contrast of, I feel good, I, I haven't smoked in three months. Then you smoke and you're like, oh, I feel disgusting. You know, or I, I'm, I'm ashamed of myself. I, I don't, uh, so let me just go over shame. So if you feel, if you, let's say you, let's say you backslide into some behavior that you're, that you got rid of and then you backslide and you feel shame go ahead feel that healing feeling of shame i made this cup uh so that you can get the holistic boundary of remorse so you feel oh i feel like i did something mean to my body instead of wallowing in the general feeling of unworthiness resulting in an emotional block of guilt 
So any addiction that you move past, even for a little while, when you, if you backslide into it, you can feel that shame, get, get the uh, lesson of remorse, and then keep yourself from, from lowering your vibration to guilt. So it's still a learning experience that you're still moving forward. You're still raising your vibration. Even if you backslide into an addiction, it's not the same. So people say, oh, I went backwards. I know better. I know better. Well, now that's a stick that you're hitting yourself with. And that's not the intention. Just learn. You have remorse. It's not the same cigarette or whatever the addiction is. It's not the same as, you know, it's, there's a different energy around it. It's just enjoy it. Enjoy that backslide as part of the contrast to what you're moving into and creating. All right. I used to, I used to cut myself when I was, I was suicidal and I used to cut myself and cutting wasn't even a thing back then. It was like, no, no one ever talked about it. So I didn't know anybody else ever did it. And so, uh, you know, there was, I knew that it wasn't good. I know you're not supposed to cut yourself and I'd have to hide it. And so, um, when I stopped, you know, I stopped and then, then I wanted to do it again. And so I, uh, so, but when I did it again, like after not doing it, when I did it again, like once, you know, one little cut was like all I needed to get what, what it would have been like four before it wasn't the same. So, and then, I, and then that was like a, a backslide into that. Uh, and I knew, you know, and it, and it had more energy. I had more consciousness around the behavior. So I didn't have to do it so deeply. Like if, if it was smoking instead, you can smoke, you know, if you're a real smoker, if you're regularly smoking, you're going to smoke, you know, however many cigarettes in the day. But then if you quit for three months and then you backslide into, and you have one cigarette, you don't, you, there's more consciousness. Your vibration was higher and there's more consciousness around that one cigarette. And so it's not the same as one of the, however many you used to smoke. Okay. I hope I made that clear. All right. Now. So your higher potential self, uh, I, I let her hang. She hung out for a little bit and she showed me that she's the, so your higher potential self visiting from the future. She's, I'm going to describe her to you. So if you want to close your eyes, that might be a good idea. I'm going to describe your higher potential self to you so that you get the feel of who you could choose to be. She's very strong. She's beautiful and she's powerfully present powerfully present like she gets and she's very accepting of others and herself so she gets that by by being somewhere and being powerfully present she provides a service to other people that come in contact with her uh, plants are gonna thrive animals are gonna love her more just with a higher vibrational being of loving and accepting yourself and others and having that powerful presence, you, you bring a higher vibration to the entire world. But right where you are, what you do is you experience more love. So like, uh, I mean, I, I get the coolest people, like the guy who delivered a FedEx package, it was my dad, but it came to me and I got to meet this person and he's just like happy. So the people that come into contact with me, um, their vibration goes up. My vibration goes up. It's like, it's a really nice thing. So this is, this is you, your potential. She's strong, beautiful, powerfully, powerfully present and very accepting of others and self that renegade yogi stuff, um, from last night must resonate on some level because I see that you could quickly adopt those four principles and live from there. So I see you picking that up very quickly going, yeah, this, this makes sense. And I'm going to practice this. The thing is, it may sound to, to practice the four principles. I bless you. I forgive you. I respect your free will choices and I love you. And I don't need it back from you done. It may sound labor intensive to practice that with every single person and before you go out in public, but I'm telling you, it becomes who you are 
and then you don't have to think about it anymore. So you hold the beliefs until the beliefs integrate into your oneness. And then you don't need to, to practice them. You don't need to say them for every single human being unless you get triggered or upset by somebody. So it gets easier and easier and easier. All right. So pick an age. I felt like pick an age when you felt strong. Uh, it feels like you're maybe in your 30s or so. Uh, keep telling yourself, I'm this age in your head, you know, not out loud. I'm this. So for me, I'm 25. So it feels like for you though, it was an age after your kids didn't really need you much at all. So you may have, they may, may still have been living at the home in your house with you, but maybe you were gardening regularly or something. You get, you got to a, you got to a point where you felt strong. Okay. So, and you want to tell yourself, so whatever, say if it's 30, 35, you want to pick one age though. So like, I'm always 25, 25, I'm 25, even though I'm 47. So you hold this age in your mind. I am 30 or 35, whatever it is. Just remember to when you felt strong. And then you go back there, back there in your mind and you close your eyes. I'm this age, right? I feel strong. And you, and you bring that in. So 68 seconds at a time, you go back to that age and you feel in your body, you feel what that feels like. You feel what it's like. You get to the point where you feel strong and you're in the flow. You know, maybe you're gardening. So like I remember gardening regularly. So when you first start gardening, you know, the beginning of the season, whatever, um, your muscles are sore. You're tired, but when you really get in like halfway through the season, when you're like tan now and, and you're strong and, 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 and all you, you know, the hardest work of clearing, cleaning up the garden is really for the most part done and staking is done. And so then you're just enjoying the garden, but you're doing the upkeep and you're watering and you're feeding and you're tan and you're sweaty, but you feel strong and you feel calm. You get to a point where you feel strong and are in the flow and you're tan and sweaty and you feel strong, calm, just fine. That's where you focus. So you're that age, whatever the age is, and then feel that feeling that I just described where you're in the flow and you're strong and you're calm and you're just fine. So you're going to do that all the time. 68 seconds. I'm this age and then feel that feeling for 68 seconds at a time and your arms want to stretch. This kept coming. Your arms really want to stretch. Okay. So, and then I, so the, one of the clearing, one of the ways I clear is pranic healing clearing, but I labeled the stations. There's five stations in the front, five in the back. And when I was at station five, which is, which I call the world at large, your guides say to you, don't worry about the world. Worry about only your little corner of it. And then they say, of course, don't worry. They're just saying, don't worry about the world. Just make your little corner perfect, joyful, loving. Make your little corner what you want the rest of the whole world to be. And see your 35 years old is what I was getting. See your 35 year old peaceful, powerful self like a rock thrown in a calm pond and then the waves go out from you. This is, this is the reality. If we all can't really read it on my writing. If we all took responsibility, if each person, if each person just took responsibility for our own little corner and then we radiate out from one, our one center point of consciousness, what we want the world to look at, look like. So if I want a peaceful, loving world, I bring all my energy to my, my one point of consciousness. Okay. And I'm 25 and I am strong, happy, peaceful, loving, deeply and completely love and accept myself. And then I hold the energy of the way I want everyone else in the entire world to be peaceful, loving, strong, happy, healthy, safe, So I hold it for myself. I bring all my consciousness here as I create it for myself. 
I'm consciously creating for all humans. And then I just take care of my little corner of the world. And then, then I, I'm a rock thrown in the middle of a calm pond. And that my waves of peace, love, power, strength, health, happiness, safety radiates out and affects everyone else positively. So imagine if every single human being did that. Okay, so if you just imagine every single person doing that, that's going to help raise your vibration, raise everyone's vibration. People watch, people watch, choose to watch the news or shows where they're talking about other people, their, their they're telling their opinions on what other people's opinions are. <laughs> so, um, you know, that's not raising the vibration and it doesn't do any good. I mean, if I want to listen to someone's opinion, I want them to tell me their opinion. But for me to listen to somebody tell me their opinion about someone else's opinion, when that might not be that person's opinion over there. That's a waste. That's just a waste. Okay, but people are distracted and it's fun to do, and they would they would rather be entertained like that because their ego can say, yes, get the news, you need to know what's going on, and then they feel like they know what's going on, but they're hearing one person describe another person's point of view. Well, if you want that person's point of view, just listen to that person, speak their point of view. And then, other than that, just meditate and be and take care of your corner of the world and you're going to do more rather than being distracted all right so i'm excited to work with you uh, i i can help you if you want to so uh, i can help you through the spiritual life coaching program um that i'm going to set up with videos and stuff like that it'll, it'll it's not it's not like it sounds and plus workshops um so some of my uh, the, the workshops that I do. So I do videos for free and I post them on the Renegade Yogi YouTube page, but the workshops I do are not open to everyone because I own, uh, um, only the high vibrational people come. So you, you'll see how that feels. And I may do one with the computer, but it'll still only be open to people with you know, the potential to be a Renegade Yogi because it's important when we come together that um, that, uh, everybody's capable of holding a higher level vibration. And then you, everybody raises each other's vibration. Like, a, like the FedEx guy that came, you know, the other day. Oh, okay. Let go of all worries from the past. And then I burped. What matters is now. Carolyn May says, uh, uh, Carolyn May says, I've God's hands in the world. Um, oh, so I don't know if you go to church or not. So church, the experience of going to church should raise people's vibration. So that's the point. People go to church, whatever. It, it, if it raises your vibration, you're in the right place. But sometimes church becomes an obligation to where if people don't go, it lowers their vibration out of guilt. And um, if, if you're going to church out of obligation, then as far as I'm concerned and your guides are concerned and this healing is concerned, stop. So don't go to church out of obligation because you may have outgrown church or however you feed yourself spiritually. It's like a life raft. So it gets you to, it helps you cross the river, but sometimes you have to put the life raft down in order to climb the mountain. You don't want to drag the life raft with you because it helped you cross the river. So the life raft helps you cross the river, but now you have to make a choice. Uh, if, it, it may serve you more and it may serve your spirituality more if you don't go to church or you find a new way. And then if, if you just say God's hands in the world, like I'm God's hands in the world. And uh, that's always going to keep you moving forward. So being God's hands in the world is always going to move you forward. And uh, um, okay, that's all I want to say about that right now. So on your back, in your back, there's too many old worries. So take care of your back right now. It has been holding really old shit for a while. Okay, and then, so in the clearing process, I cleared the self, that was pretty good. But then I cleared like spouse slash boyfriend, you know, like partner. And there was some really yuck energy on your back. So I got some uh, other information that 
Um, if you want to talk by phone, we can go over, but uh, you may just know what I'm talking about. So that we had to, that took a while to clear, like spouse energy and your back. So the back is where we put stuff we don't want to look at. So like say if 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 you were um, if you knew you were being cheated on or something, you know, by your spouse, but you have the little kids, you don't want to see that, and so you you put it on your back. Or um, my brother had to give his two weeks notice at a job and he was he loved the people that he worked with so he didn't want to give his two weeks notice. So he had to do this two weeks notice giving that and he didn't want to do it so he put it on his back. So if things that you have to, or things that you see or you have to deal with, you don't want to deal with them, you put it on your back. Uh, so it seemed like maybe you left a long time relationship through death or divorce. Okay, that's what it seems like. So you, some, something, you left some long-term relationship, long time, long-term relationship through death or divorce. Okay. So we cleared that. Um, with the kids, so the third station is kids. There was old back energy and worries about them that we cleared. Uh, the fourth station is a uh, family and friends. There was lots of uncertainty. In, in your in your back there's a lot of uncertainty with your family and friends the truth is okay this could be just from uh, you're changing your life now so whatever changes you're making you could be worried that the changes that you're making and the choices that you're making to enjoy your life more might upset your family and friends that's totally normal so there's lots of uncertainty but the truth is I could give you a plane ticket to France right now and you could gather all your cash together and just, you know, if I, if I say here, two hours, you know, in five hours, here's a plane ticket to France. Your plane leaves in five hours. You could, you really could go get, you know, pack, get your money together, say, say goodbye and you say, handle everything, get on the plane, go to France and, and land and like find a place to stay. And even without speaking the language, you would be fine. So you can change your life really drastically because honestly, if I did that, you know, you would be fine. You would end up fine. I lived, I was 21 years old. I lived in Holland and, um, I was fine. You could do it. So just remember that, like, we're not going to do that. I'm not going to send you a plane ticket to, to France. But the thing is you have to understand that you could do something that drastic and be fine so that whatever choices you're going to be making now, you know you're really going to be fine because what it's easier than sticking you on a plane to France. Okay. And then the fifth station is the world at large. There's a there's a lot of yuck on your back there. Worries about the world. Worries about the the world you're leaving behind for your kids. And they already said, don't worry about the world. Don't worry about the world. There's a lot of there's so much stuff happening. And I know there's not it's not all awesome, but you know. Things have been shitty and and like some stuff's gonna start coming out i imagine um because there's a lot of people raising vibration that just brings light to the world and then then we see so we'll see and that's like what is there like twenty nine thousand sealed indictments right now who cares it's not your job it's not my job i'm not i'm not in the government i'm not working to you know expose anybody it's not my job uh this is my job you know and so don't worry about the world. The world is going to do what it's going to do. You need to just love yourself, love your life to the point where you're raising your own vibration in the collective as much as possible. Same with me. Okay. All right. So in the front, uh, okay, you're ready to be powerful. You're one of the rare people who understand that it's not scary to be powerful, probably because you've been responsible for so many kids and because you want to hand over a peaceful, loving world to them and any grandchildren that may come through. The good news is it starts with you and you can't change others. All you can do is you. And then stretching again. So stretch, you really need to stretch a lot. I had a uh, kid that I channeled. I live in Newtown where the 20 kids got shot in um, one of the kids I channeled a lot for his mother. So I 
got to trust him and know him. And I had to go to his house one day, his mom's house. And I said to him, which don't do this. No one should, if you're not, if you, but I allow it. I said, if you want to, it's like a voluntary possession, but don't do it. Please don't. Um, I know this spirit. I know this soul really well. And um, we were close. So I said, if you want to do a voluntary possession, and he did. And, and I thought he would pet his pet dogs or horses or walk around or smell flowers or whatever. And all he wanted to do was stretch. And I thought that was really cool that, you know, someone who's got a limitless spirits, like he can go anywhere. His, he's just an essence. The only thing he wanted to do when he got into a body was stretch and feel, and it felt so good. And I could feel him feeling how good it feels to stretch, but he needed that limitation. He needed that, um, you know, the, the limitations of a physical body to push against that in order to feel how good it feels to stretch. So if you can keep that in mind, just stretch all the time. Like, look at what dogs do. Downward dog, there's a reason. They stretch constantly because they're like, oh, I'm in a physical body. It feels so good. You know, their spirits know. Um, being, so stretch. Being afraid of the world keeps you in a bud and your spirit wants you to flower. Burst open, live out loud. That doesn't mean go yell and scream and demonstrate. It means to powerfully enjoy your life. I came to live, I bought myself a card. I came to live out loud. And it just means I came to just see what this experience is all about and live my life so powerfully. And if you can imagine like how, if you're so, so happy, like crazy happy, what you're able to provide for your, you know, offspring, it's amazing. Your guides and angels, they all are like, she's so easy to love. She's so easy to love. So you're so easy to love. I get chills. feels so good. You have a very feminine energy. Um, if you're not with a mate right now, that's fine. That's okay. Um, you're changing. But a, a good mate for you would be a very masculine one. You know, uh, you both could enjoy. So, so really feminine feminine mate and a really, you know, combined with a really masculine mate, they both enjoy one, the one's femininity and they both enjoy the other's masculinity. Okay. Like a yin yang, the dark black and bright white. It's a very nice compliment. Um, it's not a codependency. It's not, you complete me, uh, or you fill in all my gaps. That's codependent. That's when two people, so what, what, so codependency is they fill in each other's holes. So they that that's where people hold each other responsible for their happiness. It's your fault I'm sad. And so when, but when two complete people, two whole individuals get together, now they enjoy each other, but they complement each other. And each is responsible for their own happiness. And each is responsible. They, they stay healthy, happy, and they take responsibility for their own happiness, but they want to be with each other. They enjoy being together. They don't need to be together in order to feel whole or complete. That would be codependency. So what your spirit's working on, and I don't know if you're with anybody right now, and I don't know if you're straight or not. I'm, I'm making this assumption, but, um, if you, if you do desire to be with a woman, there are masculine women. So anyway, the mate for you would be masculine. Um, so what your spirit's doing, is like, it wants to come and grow and it wants to really experience and, 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 and deeply and completely love and accept that femininity. Um, you, that doesn't mean you can't do a, uh, a masculine job because remember jobs are not masculine. So I used to be an airline pilot, um, for United airlines. And so I had a very masculine energy. I always felt like a guy, but I found a guy that ate more than me. And he's like raw caveman. His hands are like oven mitts. And so he's more masculine than me. And I get to really focus on loving and nurturing our children because he takes care of like the safety stuff. Um, so it's a nice compliment. So your spirit wants you to be a whole person. Then you'll attract another whole person. Then you can really enjoy being the feminine and, and your mate will enjoy your femininity. And then you can enjoy your mates masculinity. And, and your mate can enjoy their masculinity. And then two together, like the yin yang feels so good, feels so powerful, feels so strong because each one's strong by themselves. 
each one is all they need, but they do enjoy the complement of the other. So I took EFT tapping uh, training in Newtown, and they offered these classes. And the classes, they held these classes at the firehouse where the parents of the children that died on December 14th found out that their kids weren't coming home. And I remember thinking, why on earth would you use this building? I was like grossed out before the training. But then when I got there, I, and then so energetically, of course, I started to feel it. I was like, holy crap. Um, so there's all these firefighter people, and they had this, and there was tons of us. There was 40 of us. And they, these guys had their fridge. All the guys took all their stuff out of the refrigerator for the whole day so that we could put our stuff in. They made our, us the priority on, on every single level, every single level. And I understood when I was sitting in the room and I could feel how nurturing we were able to be was because we had this, there was this intense masculine energy around the building. It, it felt sort of like all the firefighters were like holding their arms together, like keeping us safe and secure you know, looking out, like keeping us safe and secure. And then inside, we were able to be really loving, really nurturing, really, really deepening the experience because we had this, it's like a hard outer shell of masculinity and strength and power. It was so cool. And then inside, we were able to be even more, we didn't have to worry about our safety. We didn't have to worry about um, being anything but as deeply loving and deeply nurturing as possible. So it's a really nice balance. All right. Okay, so now I want you to close your eyes for just a sec. Close your eyes and take a deep breath into your nose. And exhale slowly through your mouth. I'm going to say something that, that I kept hearing. And if someone who passed away pops into your head, or they used to say that, then let me know. Because I, I do a... So I do healings, but I also do like $50 channeling sessions with, with people if, if you wanted. So anyway, but I, I'm, I'm not interested in, I'm not trying to sell you that. It would only be if when I say this phrase, someone pops in your mind, maybe they're already in your mind, but take a deep breath in through your nose and exhale slowly through your mouth. Push your stomach down, get grounded one more time. Inhale deeply through your nose, big belly. Expanding, allowing all that is, and slowly exhale through your mouth. I want to say, the meek shall inherit the earth. The meek shall inherit the earth. See, if somebody pops in your head, then um, let me know. Okay. So in tapping, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. And then I wondered if you saw a bird during the healing, hawk or something. But I felt like it was not in real life. It could have just been in your mind. But I don't know if you were sitting or laying down. You might have been waiting for me to call you. That's okay. It, it happens the way it happens. So they say, you don't know who you are. By removing the ego stories and layers of creation, of identities, we will get to your divine spark of divinity. Divine spark of consciousness. It's, it's your divinity. You are all you need. From there, you create your heart's desires. Your divine self slash God puts these desires in your heart to show you what to create so that you can feel like you are just so loved. You don't need to be anything. You just need to be. So when these desires drop into your heart, it's your, it's the highest and holiest source creator energy showing you if you bring, if you manifest this, then you'll see how amazing you are and why we all love you and why you're just this unique divine child of the universe. Okay. Okay. So lay down. So this is how they finished. Lay down, lay down, and you're going to imagine. So if your head's here, you're laying down, your feet are here. Imagine pure divine love energy. Highest and holiest source creator energy washing in through the bottoms of your feet, allowing you to ground. So washing in this way, through the bottoms of your feet, 
allowing you to ground as it moves up. As it moves up, it clears all. And as it clears everything and, and washes up, all that gets cleared away gets given to God. So let go and let God. So this would, you know, if you're not going to church right now, this would be a great way to wash yourself clean with the divine healing energy of God, which is why people go to church. That's what they, that's what their intention is usually, or to commune with people. Um, but we have, people can do that on Skype now. You don't, church is sort of an outdated thing, but people still, there's some people that still really enjoy going to church and it does raise their vibration. So that's good for them. But if it's not raising your vibration to go to church, then you shouldn't be going to church. <laughs> so you can lay down, wash through your feet, divine healing energy washes through your feet, allowing you to ground and whatever, as it washes through everything that it clears out, just goes right to God. Let go and let God clearing, clearing, clearing yourself out. Let go and let God just keep washing it through, washing it through. And then that song, Jesus, take the wheel, <laughs> take it from my head. Okay. Um, anyway, let go and let God. It's just easy. Let it be easy. Let it be easy. Let your divinity just live in your body. Let your divinity um, you know, connect and then show you what you want to manifest and create so that God, the universe, the highest and holiest source creator energy can put these desires in your heart and say, do this, then you'll see. So we're all divine, unique expressions of the same universal healing, divine energy source. We're all unique expressions. And each divine spark, each unique expression of the same pure love energy uh, wants to play. So we're just these divine sparks playing in the universe right now. And so when you, you basically say, as the divine spark that you are, what do I want to create? What do I come here to do? What's going to make me so happy? What's going to make me feel loved, loving, all that? Let me create that. And then bam. And anything that you want to create in your heart, even, you know, that makes you so happy. Like I want an Airstream trailer. Other people are going to get something out of that Airstream. It's not selfish. So whatever our divine spark plants the seed of in our heart to be manifested and created is, is going to be in service to other people. Even if it's only through your own joy, you're going to provide way more good stuff. All right. So the let go of all things, let go of everything, everything. And you'll see that it is replaced with such better high vibrational stuff, everything. And I love the expression, it takes an open hand to receive. You have to let go in order to receive. I didn't get to your chakras, but um, I have to hold the boundary to keep the angels working with me. And then last they said, stretch, stretch. All right, I love you. We can talk if you want. You don't have to. Um, I hope you like this. I hope you understand. You can watch this as many times as you want. Love you. Have a great day. Have a great day, little lady.